Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Toy Geek Maniac's Funko Pop I'm Chad Miller and I have two new pops to add to my collection. Um, I've sort of gone through a bit of a um, horrible time in my life uh, over the last probably two months. Um, so I haven't really been able to treat myself to anything. Uh, because of missing work and things like that and um, although I've received some amazing gifts from you subscribers out there uh, which I definitely appreciate um, however uh, today I just had a little bit of expendable income and <laughs> I decided I was gonna go to my local um, toy slash comic book store and um, I was looking for something, anything actually. <laughs> and I came across two really good finds. So uh, they are Funko Pop related, so hence why I'm doing this episode. And um, so let's get cracking on the first one. So I happened to locate Evil Lynn from Masters of the Universe and um, I was, uh, I think this is the first in the series that I have. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. And um, I was kind of really honestly hoping to find Atila as well. Um, Oh wait, no, no, I have She-Ra. Oh, right there. <laughs> but I was honestly hoping to find Atila, and um, I'm not even sure if she's available or not, but I did find Evil Lynn, so I'm gonna open her up and we're gonna take a look. Now, Evil Lynn comes as her, um, original uh, figure counterparts sort of style um, which means she has the yellow skin um, which was not the case in the animated series she does have a stand which tends to be problematic for female figures <laughs> Um, and she has a turnable head. She is not a bobblehead. That is the only articulation that she has. But she does have some amazing articulation based on her original action figure, which I happen to own. So yes, here is Evil Lynn from Masters of the Universe. So this next pop is very um, special to me because it's a character that I've loved for as long as I can remember, you know, being a child and And now that I'm in my 40s, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, most recently I acquired uh, another pop in this series, 
and I was debating on whether it was based on the original toy line or if it was based on the animated series. And the only way that I was going to find out was really based on this pop. So, here I have Scarlet, my favorite character from G.I. Joe. So after acquiring Baroness, I uh, decided to look on Amazon to uh, add Scarlet to my Amazon wish list, which is something I always include in uh, whether it's Toy Geek, Maniac, or Funko Pop Love um, in the description because so many of you are amazing and give me awesome stuff. Um, and I don't ask for it. If it, it, it's there, if you want, <laughs> that's just, it's, it's wonderful because it gives me material to continue episodes of these um, that I love to do. And it also gives me a chance to broaden this channel and give me a way to build my collection. Uh, which I so entirely love. Um, I mean, this this stuff is amazing. Um, it's things, yes, I get it, um, but it, it's it's things that I love and bring meaning to my life. So, at any rate, um, so I decided that I was gonna look up Scarlet uh, to add to my Amazon wish list, and she was nowhere to be found at all. I I I was shocked, and I was just like, man, is I mean, is she that high in demand that you know? Amazon can't even have her available, uh, even by third-party sellers. Uh, it, it, it was just like she didn't exist. So when I stopped into my local uh, toy slash comic book store um, and I saw her, I, I, I just boom, had to, had to. So um, the debate in question as far as whether uh, these pops were based on the actual original action figures or the animated series has now been answered. So Scarlet here is available and uh, she has no ponytail. So that means uh, that she is based on the original toy line uh, because she did not feature a ponytail in that line, uh, whereas in the animated series, she did have a ponytail. Uh, she does feature a turnable head, not a bobble head. Uh, she has her signature crossbow. Um, the odd thing is, is that the color on these areas of her costume, or her uniform, I should say, is, uh, green, where I pretty am sure that it was more gray, um, on the original toy, um, and also in the animated series. She has her stand. And yeah. So I, I, I now have one of my ultimate favorite characters of all time uh, as a Funko Pop. And um, this makes me extremely happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is Scarlet and... Uh, I'm super elated. So that is going to do it for this episode of Toy Geek Maniacs. Well, go pop a love. 
Thank you so much for watching and thank you for um, all the subscribers that uh, send me things uh, to review to help uh, get this channel out there. It's growing slowly but surely and it's fine. I'm, I'm not looking for fame or uh, going viral or anything like that. I just love putting stuff out there that I can share with the world, share with those who are like-minded and love uh, pop culture, action figures, toys, um, and that sort of thing. So um, these were two items that I purchased myself. Um, so it just goes to show you that I'm not relying just on y'all. <laughs> to um, help get this channel going um, but I definitely thank you for watching it, it it really means a lot to me more so than anything that anybody can get from me so thank you once again uh, feel free to comment to like subscribe hit the notification bell, you know all that kind of stuff if you're an avid YouTuber, so um, that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Love and light to you all.